Hi, today we will compare two candle patterns, the doji and the engulfing candles. To do this, we will use a simple strategy combined with the Bollinger Bands, and we're going to backtest the patterns over the last year of historical data on the one hour time frame. We will show how combining price action patterns with other indicators can be a good tool for pure technical trading. The Python code is available for download from the link in the description of this video. And if you like the content, please support by liking and following this channel. If you have any ideas you want to explore, we can discuss this in the comments section. We will focus only on two set of patterns, a doji preceded by a bearish candle and then followed by an uptrend candle or bullish candles, which indicates a future uptrend and the engulfing pattern where a candle open and close prices are less and greater than those of the previous candle. So in other words, this current candle is totally engulfing the previous candle. And whatever this direction is, this is going to be the forecasted trend for the future price. These are examples of the bullish setup of these two patterns. We can also consider the bearish setups where a doji is followed by a bearish candle. And in the case of the engulfing pattern, the engulfing candle has a bearish direction. In this case, these patterns would indicate a future downtrend. So the way we are using these patterns, first we wait for a price candle to close above or below the Bollinger Band lines. If we have a bullish pattern forming below the lower Bollinger Band line, then we set a buying signal. And if we have a bearish candle set up above the upper Bollinger Band line, then we set a short or a selling signal. So again, if we have a bullish pattern below the Bollinger Bands, we're expecting the price to go back up. And if we have a bearish pattern above the Bollinger Bands, we're expecting the price to go back down. And this is what we will be exploring in Python. We're gonna write all of this in Python, put it all in a trading strategy and carry out the backtesting part before applying some modifications and optimizations into our strategy. This is the Jupyter Notebook that I have used to backtest these, uh, this indicator. So I'm using the Y Finance module and the Pandas at first. We are downloading the Euro US dollar between 2021, 1st of April up to 19th of March, 2023. And I'm using the hourly time frame. You might want to change this for your future experiments if you like, but for this video, we're going to use the hourly time frame. Then I'm using the Pandas technical indicators, technical analysis module to uh, compute the Bollinger Bands. I'm using a length of 30 and a standard deviation of 1.5. These are also two parameters that you might want to experiment on in the future. Then we can define our function Bollinger Doji signal. It takes the data frame with the open, close, high and low prices and the Bollinger Bands data. And we're going to check for the first condition. So for a bullish signal, we're going to look for a closing price of the current candle, which is below the lower Bollinger Band line. If it's the case, and at the same time, we have a current closing price, which is greater than the open price. So we have a green candle or an uptrend candle preceded by a doji candle where the closing price is equal to the opening price and preceded also by an opposite trend candle. So a bearish candle where the closing price is below the opening price. So this is the case here on the left that we are trying to represent in our code. We have a current green candle or an uptrend candle preceded by a doji. The open is equal to the closing price preceded by a bearish candle. So this is our reversal pattern. We're considering this as a reversal pattern. And if it's happening below the lower line of the Bollinger Band, then we set a buying signal or a bullish signal. This is why we're returning to for the bearish signal. It's completely the opposite. So we have a closing price that is above the upper band of the Bollinger's. Then we have a current candle, which is bearish. So the closing price is below the opening price preceded by a doji. The closing is equal to the opening price and preceded by um, an uptrend or a green candle where the closing price is above the opening price. In this case, we're returning one, which is a bearish signal or a sell signal. In any other case, we don't have any signal. So the function would return zero. Then I'm using this function and I'm computing the signals in the data frame. We're adding those signals into a new column called Bollinger Doji signal, which is equal to whatever the function is going to return for each candle. We can now visualize these signals on a chart. To do this, I'm creating a new column in the data frame called point positions. And this is where we're going to add the signals either above or below the candles using this function point position, taking X as a parameter. 
So this is just to create new positions of points that we're going to plot on a graph later on. If the uh, signal is bearish, meaning if it's a selling signal, we're going to put a point above the candles. If it's a bullish, we're going to place the points below the candles where the signal happened. Now we can plot the uh, signals, the Bollinger Bands, and the um, candles on one same graph. And we can see here, I'm going to zoom in on this part. So that's a signal. We have a doji followed by a bearish candle, which is preceded by a bullish candle. And we can see that our code is working as intended. And the purple point is the signal. It was placed above the candle because this is a bearish signal. Now, in this case, we didn't have a drop in the price, so it was a false signal. And we're going to test the accuracy of such a strategy in the future. To backtest the efficiency and the accuracy of our uh, indicators, we can create a backtesting instance or a class from the backtesting package. I'm using an initial lot size of 50% of the equity, and I'm using the signal that we have just computed and added into our data frame. So if the signal is bullish and we don't have any current open trades, we're allowing one open trade at a time. We're setting the stop loss and the take profit values, and then we're executing a buy position using these two stop loss and take profit values. The take profit stop loss ratio is set to 1.5 in the case of the doji pattern. When we have a bearish signal, we're executing a sell signal and using the uh, lot size, the 50%, the take profit stop loss ratio, and both the stop loss and take profit distances. The uh, stop loss is taken as the minimum or the maximum of the lower values or the maximum of the higher values of the previous candles, taking into account the current candle and the, just the previous candle. So in the case of a bullish signal, for example, we're going for a long position, we're buying position, so we're going to set the stop loss just below the uh, lowest point of the current candle or the lowest point of the previous candle, whichever is the uh, minimum between these two values. And in the case of a bearish signal, so when we are going short, we're checking the maximum or the highest price between the current candle and the previous candle. And the take profit is set according to the stop loss distance. So it's equal to 1.5 the uh, stop loss distance. So we're taking a margin of one over 10. So this is a leverage of one to 10 cash $1,000 to start, and then we're running a backtest and we're getting a return of minus 1.7%. So, so far, it's something that's not looking good at all. And this is confirmed by the look of the equity. This is our equity. It climbs a bit at first, but then it's going down. So we have a drawdown. And if we add commissions and so on, it's not going to be a good indicator so far. Now we can try the same backtest using the engulfing signal instead of the doji signal. So we're looking for a closing price, which is below the lower band for a bullish signal, the lower Bollinger Band. And we're checking if the current closing price is above the um, opening price of the current candle. So we have a bullish candle and the previous candle should be red. So it should be the closing price below the opening price. It's a bearish candle. And at the same time, we have the opening price of the current candle below the closing price of the previous candle. The closing price of the current candle is above the opening price of the previous candle. This is how the current candle is totally engulfing the body of the previous candle. In which case we return two, so this is a bullish signal. Same thing, we're checking if the closing price is above the upper Bollinger Band for a bearish signal, and we have a bearish engulfing pattern in this case and we return one. In any other case, we return zero because we don't have any particular signal. We're going to compute these signals and add them into our data frame to a new column called Bollinger Engulfing Signal. And just like we did for the Doji signal, we're going to plot these into a graph and we can see the purple points right here. So we can see that we have closing price above the upper Bollinger Band. And at the same time, this, is, this looks like um, an engulfing candle look at it. So this one right here is a bearish engulfing candle. It's totally engulfing the previous candle. So this is why we have a purple point above the current candle, which means this is a selling or a short uh, signal. Now we can backtest this using the uh, new computed signal, taking into account the same parameters that we have used for the doji. 
So 50% of the equity as lot size, take profit stop loss ratio 1.5 times stop loss and take profit uh, methods. So this is the minimum between the current low and the previous candles low in the case of a bullish signal. And in the case of a bearish signal, we're checking the maximum or the highest price between the current candle and the previous candle to be as our stop loss price. Then the take profit is set using the take profit stop loss ratio. Uh, according to the uh, stop loss distance we're taking the same uh, margin in this case we have a margin we took a margin for the doji around 1 over 10 1000 dollars in cash so these are the parameters so we're using the same exactly the same for the engulfing candle as well and in this case we also have something negative we have minus 1.38 percent let's check the equity it looks also um, not very good at this point the reason these two indicators might not be showing good signs at this point is because we're taking extreme cases so only the cases where we are closing above or below the bollinger bands and these might be a bit extreme which happen only when we have high volatility and a high uptrend direction or severe downtrend direction we can try an alternative method where Instead of looking for a closing prices above or below the Bollinger Band lines, we will be checking if the patterns happen within the Bollinger Bands, but the upper half of the band or the lower half of the band, meaning between mid price line and the upper line and the mid price and the lower line. So going back to the Doji, instead of taking this extreme case where we have closing price below the um, lower Bollinger Band, we're going to just apply condition where the closing price is above the lower band. So it's not outside of the Bollinger Bands, but at the same time, it should be below the middle line of the Bollinger Bands. So there's the uh, middle line, which is not plotted here, but we can still use it because it's in our data frame. So these two conditions here are what we have applied as a change for now. So the closing price again is above the lower band and it's also below the middle of the Bollinger Band lines. Then the rest is uh, exactly the same. So we have a doji and um, it's surrounded by a bearish candle, then a bullish candle, in which case we return two. I'm going to apply the uh, same conditions, slightly modified for the bearish signal. I'm going to comment that previous part. And now for a bearish signal, we need a bearish doji pattern that would happen above the middle price, the middle line of the Bollinger Band, but still within the Bollinger Band, so below the upper line of the Bollinger Bands. We're going to execute this and try to backtest everything using exactly the same parameters. We didn't change much. We just changed the fact that we are applying our signals within the Bollinger Bands instead of outside the Bollinger Bands. Let's check it out. So we have now a positive return of 17.9%. And if we take a look at the equity, it looks much better in this case. We can see that it starts uh, it struggles for attraction at the beginning, but then we start having an increase in, in the equity, a constant increase, actually. The reason we have this a big part here, and then we notice that the algorithm is working better, is because we are still on this channel. We are still treating everything as static. The market is not static. We can't apply the same stop loss and take profit distances over a period exceeding a year and expect the same results. The market is not the same, the market is changing and it's very dynamic and so should be our algorithm. But this is a topic for future videos. Now let's try to apply the same modification for the uh, engulfing signal. And I'm going to comment this part. So now we execute the cell visualization and we can go straight forward with the back testing. And the results are showing also 26% in return. So it's working better than the doji candles. We can take a look at the equity, which struggles for a bit longer, but then also it has a, a straight increase into a higher profitability. So again, this is not a full strategy. We are just testing some indicators here within a simple strategy. So if you want to use this in real life, you can use the indicators. You can use the Doji indicators and the engulfing indicators combined with um, Bollinger Bands just the way we have done it in this video. We have back tested it and we proved that these are good indicators. However, 
what should be improved in your manual trading if you want to uh, not to have those drawdown periods here and take into account the commissions and so on this is going to result in a loss you have to apply a more dynamic and a better exit signals so the way you are setting the stop loss and the take profits should be dynamic and following the market there must be a different ways and better ways to improve this taking into account the atr the average true range of the market and so on or maybe setting a trailing stop loss which we didn't test in this video the focus here was mainly to compare these two indicators the doji pattern and the engulfing pattern one versus the other and it seems that the engulfing pattern works slightly better in some cases, but we can definitely combine these two to have more profitability. So if we want to combine these two um, signals or these two patterns to use them in coordination, we can take the first signal from the previous doji, this one right here. We can modify the signal function we are using in the second case. So to combine these two signals, I'm just changing this part here. So if the Bollinger engulfing signal equal to two and the uh, self dot Bollinger doji signals equal to two, actually it can be either one of these. So it's gonna be replaced by or. So we have one of these two signals available we're going for a buying signal. So it should be an end here. We're allowing only one trade at a time. I'm going to take this part and copy it here. Just modify the signal from two to one because we are looking for a bearish signal or a short signal here. And now we can run our combined signals backtest and we can check the result. So we have 41% in returns. So we have increased the number of our trades and the number of signals that we got to 335. I think we were getting something around 100 previously. I'm going to check this and compare with the Doji case. So here we got 219 trades and uh, for the adding the engulfing signal actually added the number of the trades into a, a positive uh, return. So I'm going to plot the equity, the updated equity here, see how it's behaving. And that's what we got. So we're still having exactly the same shape. So at first, those algorithms were not working well. This strategy didn't work well for, let's say, one year. And then during one full year, it worked perfectly fine. So I'm not encouraging you to use this as an algorithmic trading pattern. This is a simple program just to test the efficiency and the accuracy of some patterns that we can use in manual trading in this case. However, if you intend to do so, the best way is to use different strategies, different algorithmic strategies in parallel. This way, when one is not working well, the other one can cover the losses. Anyway, this is all I had to tell you for this one. I hope you guys liked it and enjoyed the video. Please support by liking and subscribing. And until our next one, trade safe. See you next time.